In today's video, I'm going to be building a $1,000 snake collection. I'm really excited about filming this video. I've had this idea for weeks now. Never actually went through with filming it until today. I really want to show people that you can get a really cool snake collection for only like $1,000. Like there's a lot of really cool snakes out there that don't cost all that much. So we built a snake rack in the last video. I think it was the last video. That snake rack had seven levels. So we're going to be building a $1,000 snake collection to basically fill that rack. Now we're not going to fill the rack up with seven snakes, we're only going to do six, because I like to use the bottom run for the lids of the other containers. But in fairness, it does also give us a little bit more money to play with, because doing seven snakes for a thousand dollars, that would be tough. So we're going to get six snakes to put in our lovely new snake rack. Hypothetically, I'm not actually buying these snakes. And yes, I do realize that this is the third video we're filming in this office, where the number six is a part of the concept. It's not planned, trust me, but I am becoming a little bit more enlightened to the benefit of scripting to where stuff like this doesn't happen. However, it is what it is. So $1,000 snake collection, six tubs to fill with six snakes. We're gonna be doing this in American dollars, by the way. American dollars is just a little bit more universal than Canadian dollars. Not to mention that 1,000 Canadian dollars would literally buy me nothing. Also, to make this a little bit easier on myself, I'm gonna give myself about a 5% buffer. So I've gotta get, what would that be? That would be 950 to 1,050. So I've got to get six snakes that tally up to between that number, as close to 1,000 as I can get. Like, what are the chances I'm gonna actually tally up to exactly 1,000? It's just nice and simple for the title. But that $1,000 divided into six is gonna give us about $167 on average per snake. Now, before I start this video, I don't recommend purchasing snakes in this fashion, where you come up with a financial budget and you just try and maximize it, and maximize with a certain quantity to fill up a rack. Each snake needs to be considered individually. Each snake should pass the rules for pets, the six rules that we established in a previous video, and you also have to want the animal. Don't just be filling the rack up with animals that you don't like or aren't gonna put as much time into, we're not looking to neglect things here. So I've established a couple of rules to make this a little bit more interesting. Rule one, all the snakes must be captive bred. So no wild caught, wild, what's it called? Captive born, captive bred only. Rule two, they're all gonna be female. Female snakes tend to be a little bit bigger and size always matters. That's pretty much the only reason. Number three, they're all being housed in the same rack, which means they all are gonna be sharing the same heat tape. So they all have to have very similar requirements. So all these snakes have to have similar requirements for them to be accepted into the rack. And the most difficult rule of all, which I set up just to be an absolute douchebag to myself, was they all have to be a different species. Yeah, so I can't just have six corn snakes, even though that would be literally the best rack going. So I can't just have six of the same snake. I have to diversify the collection. Now with the admin done, let's jump on into this. I'm going to be using Morph Market for all of these snakes, by the way, so I'm not shocking around. It's just going to be on one website. So I have a strong feeling that most, if not all, of the snakes we choose here are going to be colubrids. And I have a few ideas about where to go if that is the case. But I think we need to have a look around before we actually go into that concretely. I mean, I highly, highly doubt it, but it's probably worth a look to see the pythons. So let's have a look here. We'll go pythons, all pythons. Let's see what we can find. Jeez. Jesus crossed. That is not what we're looking for. Lowest first, please. Jesus Christ. Lowest first and there's a $400 snake. I mean, we got a lot of really affordable bull pythons here, like $15, $10 up there, $20, $20. Problem is bull pythons are a bit big for the rack that we've built. So, I mean, bull pythons are a great snake. They're just not really suited for the rack we're facilitating. Let's try and isolate that a little bit more. All of those are going to be way too big. Ah, look at that. A Woma python. Absolutely legendary snake right there. Unfortunately, quite a bit too big for the rack we built, and it's also almost half our budget. Yeah, no, no pythons. Yeah, I didn't think so. They're either too big, or they're just too expensive to get the smaller dwarf ones. Let's take a quick look at some boas, just to see if there's anything in there. Bloody Nora, lowest first, you bastard. Oh yeah, Amazon tree boa, definitely not. Central American boa, wee bit too big there. Uh, Kenyan sand boas, no, I want a pet snake, not a bloody box of sand. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I did not mean that. So Kenyan sand boas are a great snake, a great starter snake, for sure. I mean, they're affordable and they're a good fit for the rack. Pretty decent when it comes to handling. I've just never been a fan, to be completely honest. I mean, there is an absolute crud ton of these things. Ooh, now that, oh, it's a male. No sausage fests for us. I mean, that is a beautiful looking sandboa right there. 
stripe, annery, whatever. I don't really care when it comes to morphs to female. $125, so it's a pretty good cost too. I personally wouldn't get a Samboa, but if I was, I would be getting this one. Very affordable and it's a beautiful looking snake. It's just a shame you'll never see it. All you'll see is sand. Yeah, abandoned mission. Pythons and boas, they're not gonna happen. Most of them are too big for the rack and the ones that aren't are just way too expensive for our budget. So, colubrids it is. We're just gonna have a colubrid only rack, which to be fair, is probably the best way to go forward anyway. And we're gonna start with my favorite snake. Our first snake that we're gonna be adding to our snake rack is my favorite snake and also my first ever snake, a Western Hognose. I know there's some talk about them changing their names. I have no idea. I'm going to call them a Western Hognose, at least for this video. Hognose snakes tend to be a little bit more elevated on their price. So we can't really be going for any morphs. So we've got a beautiful little baby here, little baby female. Let's have a look at her, see what she's like. $175 for a normal little female Hognose. Beautiful. July of 2023, eight grams. Oh, that tells me she is a picky eater. This girl was difficult at the start to get on unscented pinkies. Yep, that sounds about right. Eight grams and she's about eight months old. I think I'm gonna go for a more established hog nose. And there is a bit of a price raise for that reason. I found our first snake. We've got an eight month old, 23 gram, normal hog nose female for $200. Hognose snakes are my favorite snakes. The personality, the attitudes, there's just, they're sassy, they're dramatic. Never a dull day with a hognose snake, unless it's feeding day and they decide to not eat. I mean, this one's eight months old and it's three times the weight of the other one. So this one's gonna be a very well-established feeder. And hognose snakes can be a little bit on the picky side. So I'd rather get one that's a bit more established. It will be easier to get it feeding. But that right there is a beautiful snake and it's a great start to our rack. You can't go wrong with a hognose snake. You know, I think we should name the snakes that we're putting in our snake rack here. I'm going to call you Shovels. Great start to the collection. I'm going to call us Shovels. Let's get Shovels in the rack. Yeah, it's our first snake and I've already overspent me bloody budget. I'm supposed to do 167 per snake. I've done like 200 here. You're expensive, Shovels. But you're a hognose snake and you deserve it. I'm very happy with that first snake, you know. Love that. Now on the look for our next snake. I mean... How much is a blonde hognose? Let's have a look. Is that in the budget? Ah. Never mind. Well, that answers that. Doesn't look like there's any of those available. So we'll rethink that one. I mean, we've got a hognose snake. And for those of you that don't know, they can be a little iffy when it comes to feeding. So what we need next realistically is a snake that's never going to give us feeding problems. And then on the odd occurrences where the hognose refuses, we can just shovel it into another snake's mouth. So for that reason, that tells me we need a king snake. Doesn't really matter what kind of king snake, to be honest, but I'm thinking probably California or Florida. That way we can get a nice kind of pattern. So let's go into king snakes. We will just look at them all. Sex, we want females only. We don't like men here. And we want lowest price. I think I found our next snake here, ladies and gentlemen. California king snake. Love the pattern. Female, het, aberrant. You know, whatever this het ghost bull crap is, I'm not paying attention to the genetics of this snake. $75, that's a bargain. If you're looking for a king snake, buy this. I mean, king snakes are a great option and they are a must have if you have a collection of snakes. Because every now and again, you're gonna have a number of snakes that just refuse to eat because for whatever reason, they decided that that day was not their feeding day. So you have all these leftover rodents, you don't want them to go to waste. A king snake, alleviates that problem. And pretty much whatever you put in the front of a king snake, it will swallow. Hmm. And we're gonna call her Duchess. Welcome to the family, girl. Let's get you in the rack. Now, no snake collection is complete without our next snake. Our next snake is the best snake, period. There is no argument. Period, it is the best snake. And that snake is a corn snake. Now, because we only have $1,000 to play with here, we can't really be choosing any of the more fancy morphs. We have to pretty much do more wild type or very similar to it. However, when it comes to corn snakes, these guys have been around the industry for so long, a lot of the morphs cost the same as a normal anyway. So they're very inexpensive. But I do have one morph in particular that I'm looking for. I mean, that's a real cool looking corn snake right there. I mean, it's a male, so it breaks one of our rules. Aha, uh -huh. here we go. Found it. A snow corn snake, $60. They've got both males and females available. This is my favorite morph when it comes to corn snakes. I just love the white pinky. 
And as they get older, they actually have a bit of a yellow belly. Super cool looking morph. I love the color of this snake. But a corn snake is a must have in a collection. They're the best snake going. I love these guys and I love this morph. I'm going to call her Luna and we're going to be sending her to the rack. So that's half the rack filled right there. Uh, where are we sitting financially? That's 60, 75... 200 so what 335 so even though we overspent our budget on the hog nose the other two snakes are really helping us out keeping that budget low so that puts us at 335 dollars good start it gives us a lot of wiggle room for the last three because i have an idea of what i want for the last snake and that one's going to cost us a little bit more so these lower price ones are definitely helping us out on the budget side of things by the way the 1000 dollars it excludes shipping and taxes i just decided that now including shipping and taxes makes it a lot harder and i don't like hard things so that gives us six 665 dollars left for the last three snakes so i'm thinking should i do two more cheaper level snakes and then maybe do one snake at four or five hundred or should i divide that equally and get maybe three at about the 200 dollar mark oh that is cool egyptian false cobra that's a cool snake well cool though so we're not doing that i mean there are tons of madagascan cat eye snakes here if i can find a captive bred one at a decent price i'm buying it wild caught wild caught wild caught wild caught ah oh, they're all bloody wild caught mate that's a shame i'd love to put that in the collection we got a dragon snake here that does not sound like a good idea a yellow tail crevo for 400 dollars. that is literally insane literally insane I know it's wild caught. I mean, that would literally cost me a thousand dollars or more over here in Canada. That is insane. You lucky buggers. I mean, I really wanted an egg eating snake, but unfortunately the only ones I could find are wild caught. So I'm gonna have to abandon that mission as well. I found our next snake. It's a leucistic Texas rat snake. I know what you're thinking. They do not have the best reputation for being nice. And trust me, some of them deserve that reputation. I have three of these snakes personally myself. Two of them are beautiful little gems. Never done anything defensive. Never like rattled their tail, opened their mouths. They're just giant corn snakes. One of them is an absolute bloody rocket. She is a firecracker, piss and vinegar. She is literally the definition of a snake that does not want you to touch her. And she makes you know it. She is insane and she absolutely hates me. As soon as you pick her up, she chills out quite a bit. It's when you first open that rack, she wants nothing to do with you. I would personally message the seller and ask for the nicest one that he has. And then I would work with that snake. Because you can work with these guys and really socialize them, make them really good snakes. The only reason my one isn't is because I have two that are already nice. So I don't put in the effort to make her nice. Because realistically, I'd never choose to handle her over the other two. She's also the smallest and the youngest. So there might also be that aspect of it. So she may change as she gets older. But the two big ones, absolutely love them. But these guys can be truly amazing snakes if they are worked with and socialized. And you get one with a good personality. So this is the fourth snake going into our collection. I'm going to call her Marshmallow for $100. I've considered that one hell of a win. Go on then, Marshmallow. Welcome to the family. Please be nice. As I said, this is a $1,000 snake collection for me, what I would choose, right? I didn't choose the sandbar because I'm not a big fan of them. Some people might choose that over this snake. That's perfectly fine. I wouldn't recommend this snake for a new owner. I would recommend the sandbar for a new owner. But if you do get a bit more of a temperamental one that's gonna be a little bit of a challenge, I probably wouldn't recommend that for a new owner. At that point, I'd go with the sandbar. But for me, I prefer this style of snake a little bit more to one that's going to be hiding for the entirety of its life. So we have a whitish corn snake, a full white rat snake. We have a normal kind of hognose snake, which is kind of a brown color. And then we have a black and white California king snake. So I think we need to get something a little bit more colorful now, don't you? We need something a little bit more colorful. First thing that came to my mind was a milk snake. And yes, I know that they're basically just king snakes just with a different pattern. You can't go wrong with a milk snake. They're just a really nice, calm snake. Occasionally, they may try to eat you, but I mean, that's just part of the fun, right? Now, to be completely honest with you, I understand morphs, and I understand the appeal of morphs, and I understand the genetics behind it. What I don't understand is when we breed to get a snake that's super colorful to just look like a snake that has no color. I mean, look at this morph right here. It's a beautiful snake, don't get me wrong, but it's a milk snake. I want that milk snake coloration. So the whole point of a milk snake is to get that red, white, black kind of pattern. And, you know, we're breeding to get rid of it. I kind of just like the original style, you know? Sex, female, and we will get the lowest price. There you go, right at the top of the page here. A Nelson's milk snake, $80 for a female. That's beautiful. Like, that's what I'm looking for when I get a milk snake, not the other one. I understand the appeal, sure, but I personally would want it to actually look like a milk snake. I mean, that's a beautiful snake right there. 
and it's $80. Regardless of the exchange rate, this snake would literally cost me two to three times that cost over here. It's a good thing I don't live in the States because at these prices, I'd be buying everything. Diet live mouse. Uh, it's a king snake. I'm not that bothered about that. I mean, if it was a hognose snake and it was only eating live mice, that might put me off, but I'm not concerned. I could switch her over to the frozen fords. No problem. And this is another snake that's going to act as a garbage can for us if any of the others refuse. They're basically just a king snake. Whatever you put in front of their face, if they think it's food, and most of the time they will, they will try to eat it. Does mean occasionally they'll try to eat themselves and maybe even you but that just comes with the territory of having a king snake i'm gonna call her candy and we're gonna send her off to the rack as well and so that leaves us with one bin left and 485 dollars remaining with that kind of money we could buy something very cool kind of unique maybe something you don't see every day or we could buy a snake with a very cool mall i mean this is bloody crackers mate i'm on morph market which do sell across the world but i'm on american morph market you can buy a bloody caiman a caiman for 250 dollars I mean, only in America can you buy a bloody Cayman. That is absolutely bonkers. I love it. Yes, yes, yes. I found our last snake. And this is a banger of a snake, mate. Lake Chapella Garda Snakes. And these guys can be cohab. And for $195, we can get two of them. That is bloody awesome. They're on frozen forward mice. That's fantastic. May of 2023. Fantastic. Ooh, we've got a discount here. Discounts available for as follows. 10% off a trio. So we've got $485 left. So let's do some quick maths here. 195 times the three times 0.9. All right, we could do that. We could get three of these guys then. With that 10% off, we could get three of these guys. And it would be within our budget. Now there is a problem with us getting this particular type of garter snake. This is one of the big garter snakes. So they wouldn't be able to stay in the rack for the entirety of their life. We would have to upgrade them. But we could start off the trio in the rack and we could progress them into like a really nice built out setup with kind of like a waterfall, maybe a river. Like you could do something really beautiful with these guys. You know what that would also do? That would free up a space in the rack for another snake. I mean, I keep telling people that reptile keeping is an addiction. And I've literally just displayed that to you here. You can see the addiction mindset coming out, can't you? But three of these guys with the 10% discount, adding that into the other snakes is going to give us $1,041.50, which is in between our budget of $950 to $1,050. It leaves us with $8.50 from breaking the bank. So it literally couldn't be any better. And it says that this person has both males and females so hopefully they'd be capable of isolating and getting just females to send to us hopefully we can't always trust people because i've been sold quite a few female snakes that have turned out to not be females you've just got to be careful they might not all end up being the same sex in which case we may need to separate them at that point but ideally we get three females i mean that is an awesome collection of snakes right there whether it's start mid or an advanced snake keeper that's a perfect collection of snakes in my opinion perfect i mean you've got the hogno snake because you always need drama in your life. You got the corn snake because they're just the best snake. Period. No arguing. We've got the king snake and the milk snake. They're very calm, placid kind of snakes and occasionally may nibble on you. We got the Texas rat snake to give you a project, a snake to work on, a snake to work with. It's very rewarding when you have kind of that mean snake and you kind of tame them down. So the Texas rat snake's more of a project snake. And finally, the garter snakes. It's really cool to see how snakes interact with each other within an enclosure and how they kind of group up and stay within the same location even though they have multiple hides they tend to be in the same height. It's also going to give us a project down the line of something that we can build and make really beautiful. When these guys eventually outgrow the rack, if a female cat eye snake or a female egg eating snake were to come available that were captive bred, I would put them in the rack. Oh, we didn't even name the garter snakes. You know what? Leave it in the comments. What do you think these three garter snakes should be called?